welcome to the show. Thank I'm you. I'm very glad to have you here for the first episode of this marvellous television experience. Yeah. First question. <laughs> what do you mean, yet? Yeah? Anyway, you know what? I'm not even going to go there. Hello and welcome to Curtain Call, where we are on the lookout for the best shows in Nottinghamshire. Today we're in the auditorium of the Lace Market Theatre, where we'll be talking about the first show of their new season, which is a double bill of displacement-based dramas. First, The Jewish Wife, where a wife is leaving her German husband in the 1930s, followed by a spell in Sonny Margate during the Kosovo Civil War in the 1990s, where a local girl makes friends with a Kosovan refugee in Hannah and Hannah. Also during the show, we'll be talking about the new show from Fifth Word being performed at the Playhouse, Wreck, where we hear the story of Tariq, who found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time during a terrifying train wreck. But before any of that, as panto season just, just begins to creep its way over the horizon, my guest today is Danielle Hall, who will be treading the boards with the People's Theatre Company in Jack and the Beanstalk. But before we talk panto, I asked Danielle what she's been watching at home. On Friday night, me and my mum, we watched Eddie the Eagle. Tell me now, Eddie the Eagle is Hugh Jackman? No, 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 it's Tara Negerson. You know who Eddie the Eagle is, right? Is he the really bad skier? It was ski jumping. Yeah. And yeah, um, but we, oh, it was, it's amazing. It basically just tells his story from his perspective from when he was a little boy to growing up to being like rejected by the National Ski Olympic Olympic Winter Olympic team, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, and then he decides he wants to try ski jumping and he just goes to, I don't actually know what country it is. It's another country, they speak German. Is there snow? There's snow, okay. which is more than there is nowadays in, 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 in Europe. In the world. <laughs> um, and he like just has a go at it. And then he, at some point, Hugh Jackman turns up and everyone swoons. <laughs> <laughs> that's genuinely what he does when he walks into oh. the room. It's like, oh, it's... Hugh Jackman. Oh dear me. Hugh Jackman, Taron Egerton. It's a hit. Uh, for me, I've been watching, and this will come back, we'll come back to talk about this in a minute. It's called The Confession Tapes. You yes, mentioned this I mentioned the other day. Because it links into what we were talking about with Rec. Mm. Well, we're going to be talking about with Rec, mm. which is one of the plays we did this week. But basically, it, it's a series of, it's a Netflix series. So you've got like about seven or eight episodes where people have confessed crimes yeah. that they allegedly haven't committed. And the, it's this really fascinating thing about watching people get twisted and, 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 and br broken down to the point where they will do what you tell them to, they confess to a crime, and then because of the way the legal system works, they can't get out of it. Because it's like, you said you did it. And it's like, yeah, but I, I would, I, that was a false confession. It's like, no, you said you did it. Yeah. And now it's like, well, you're stuck in prison now, aren't you? I want to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> right, first one. You, you, we've already got two things we're going to watch. Let's crack I was going to say, see you later. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've been Richard Minkley. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. So, um, now, that first show we saw, Double Bill. Mm -hmm. So we're going to kind of take both halves separately and then squeeze them together. The Jewish Wife and Hannah and Hannah. Mm -hmm. Starting with The Jewish Wife. It's a very short scene. She is packing her bag. She's about to leave her husband um, because of the whole, you know, Holocaust. Which makes it a very cold open for the beginning of the season. Very. Did you find that? Did you find that it was a bit... Yeah, I found, I mean, after it finished, me and you just kind of both turned to each other and went, well. Well, yeah. <laughs> that happened. Um, and it was, it, it, was really, it was really well done. Mm. Like, to say that she was on the stage on her own for a good proportion of the show. Yeah. She held me, and I was, I was, I was with her. This is one of the things. I thought she did a very good job, but I was watching it thinking, is she talking to her husband and I was like why I thought that why didn't they just get an actor I did and I was like come on I mean there's enough people here at the lace market who, who would just walk into that part and then the husband actually walked in and I'm I was like, like oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, it happens. Oh, oh. <laughs> here we go yeah, but, yeah. No. and there, that was a great moment where it was like it's like he's there he's, he's mm. turned around he just came and the whole the tone of it changed as yeah. well which was really like well done mm. I felt kind of guilty because it was a very, there was an yeah. accusing tone in the way that they were doing it. And she and I was, like, was like, this is, you are doing yeah. this, this is you. And I was like, I'm not doing this. I was going to say, I, I was I, like, I mean, I'm not a saint, but I'm not a Nazi. Yeah, yeah. definitely. You know? Mm. Do you think that toughness, especially being the first show, took away from it? I don't, I don't know really. Because I, I know the lace market are quite, they, they do a lot of that kind of harder hitting stuff. So it kind of is in line with mm. how the lace market do their theatre. So I think it, if another 
theatre maybe that is more well known for doing like musicals and upbeat stuff I don't think it would have worked but mm. I think they made it work and it wasn't too long either like it was a good length so even though it was really hard hitting mm. it, it this sounds awful because it sounds like I wanted it to end but it didn't go on too long like no. you weren't feeling like that for too long it's a short play there's two people in it but let's face it Daniel, although he is a very good actor, um, I've seen him in things before, he's very good. Um, he wasn't the star of this particular show, was no, he? I so I think, um, I think it was Mandy who was in, in the lead role. We're going to edit that out. If, 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 if it's if not is, Mandy. Yeah, if this is in the show, it was Mandy. <laughs> if it's not. If it's not. It's not. Edit a cat, get rid of this bit, get rid of it. <laughs> um, End it. Um, and we'll go straight into the next one. So, yeah, after the interval, we went into Hannah and Hannah which is the story of two girls. One of them uh, is from Margate, and she's not happy with all these Kosovans coming over to her Margate. And one is a Kosovan who's quite relieved to be coming over to Margate um, to spend some time there as a refugee. Mm -hmm. Now, first off, the cast, very young. Yes. Yeah. It, it, they were... I, I'm not sure on... I don't remember their names, which is very bad. Rhiannon and Ellie. Is, what's this? Are you trying to put me to shame? <laughs> no, I just, I remember them because I really loved this show. <laughs> I really did. Wait, tell me why you were blown away. It just, it was, it was just, a, it was really good. Like for the first thing, Ellie, the girl that played <laughs> Hannah, they're both called Hannah. Um, yeah, the Kosovan which Hannah. Which doesn't help. It makes sense when you're reading it, but not when you're talking yeah, about no, it. Yeah, no, she played the, the Kosovan Hannah. Um, I, and me and you, we both agreed after the show had finished. I wasn't sure whether she was actually... <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What her accent was because it was so good. Mm. I just, I can't do an act. I can't do any Eastern Bloc accent. Honestly, it all sounds awful. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> just to clarify, you sound awful when you're doing. I it. sound awful. Not yeah. Okay. No. And and, and she, it, she just blew me away. This is true, but it shows you the power of confidence because, mm. like, I don't know what Kosovan sounds like. <laughs> I, it, she could have been doing anything, but she did it with commitment. So I bought it, and I was like, and it took me a while to realise that I. Don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to these things. But yeah, it really sold it. And equally, the other um, actress who's called... Rhiannon. Oh, that's why you're here. <laughs> um, she... I, I really enjoyed her performance. There was something very raw about it. Mm. Like, it didn't feel, like, very deft, but she just kind of came over with bags of enthusiasm. Yeah. And that won me over, especially when she was doing, like, the karaoke scenes. Are you ready, Margaret? Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a part of me that's just so willing to be up for a karaoke moment. And it was sort of like when she was kind of doing like dancing Korean with people in the crowd. And your laugh, that. your laugh in that, in that. <laughs> it's so loud, it was so loud. I was just like, everyone was like looking at me and I was like, I'm not with him, <laughs> I'm not with him. Yeah, well guess what, video proof, you were there with me. You can't back <laughs> it was out so now. Funny. It was funny, but no, they were both really good. And mm. they, they, they both, they went on such a journey. So this is the other thing, um, basically there is, the core of this is a, another horrible, I was going to say, you know, genocide-like, but it was a, a story of genocide happening in Kosovo at that time, and there is all of that darkness there. However, there is loads of fun bits and silly bits, and especially, bear in mind, these are two, like, young teenage girls. They don't specify how old they are, or no. at least if they did, I don't remember. 16. 16. 16. They're both 16. Well, it felt like they were very young teenage girls. Mm. There's so much, like fun in it and it which it's like it's got all of the bits you would want from a really good show mm. in that sort of <clears throat> shell did you did you find that did you because it did go from like the fun karaoke everybody likes singing to like race mm. like riots basically it was, it was it was really well done really well done I I loved I loved like I said their journey together like obviously you started off with the Margate Hannah mm. being as racist as yeah, they come, basically. She was an awful human being. Maybe and then quite they're angry. They yeah. did do that thing where I, could, I was thinking in my head, like, oh, I don't like it's you. Like, just, just grow up. Mm. Um, but no, like, and then like, they, they both love singing, and then they're brought together through singing, and I just, I thought that was so sweet. When they got up on the little stage thing and then sang their song. Yeah. And then that was when they, she came on the stairs and she got, like, it all started. Oh, and I was yeah. like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, no, they just be they just became friends. Well, this is it. Next question, which is an important one. Um, these two plays were kind of merged together mm. on this theme of displacement. So you've got the Jewish wife being sort of having to run away, and you've got the Kosovan becoming a refugee in Margate. 
how do you think the two shows went together? Because, I mean, we were joking about the Mamma Mia thing, but it, it, it went from dark, holocaust, sort of marriage breaking apart to seaside resort. We're having a laugh. We're having karaoke songs. There are these two teenage girls with a friendship that develops, and it felt much more like there's a happy ending. It's, uh, this is taking nothing away from their performance. Mm. I think... Hannah and Hannah stood up on its own. I don't think they needed the Jewish wife in there. I think that would have been better if they'd have done more excerpts from that play as the performance. I just, I think, I just, yeah, because I, yeah, I don't know how to say it really. I just think it stood up on its own and it didn't need, maybe they wanted to make obviously more of an evening out of it and make it worth paying people are coming in to, to watch. Obviously, if they'd have just seen 45 minutes, they'd have been like, hmm, but, I just think it stood on its own. They both stood on their own in their own different fields. Mm. And even though there is that theme of displacement, I don't think they were very similar at all. You kind of are kind of left with the contrast, but not necessarily some more than that. Yeah, unless that's what they were going for. They wanted to just show how different the theme can be. Even if it's the same theme, maybe they wanted to show how wildly it can be different. And, and I suppose this is what you were saying earlier, actually, that you know, because the lace market is run by volunteers and, you know, they are more interested in pursuing the performing for, not always for like the most commercial success. It's a charity, so it's got these different factors involved. So people have said you get to see things that you don't get to see anywhere else. So you get to see this weird play and these two, obviously I'd never heard of Hannah and Hannah. I'd or, never heard of yeah. either of them. Yeah, well, and, uh, I mean, I'm an idiot, but you know. <laughs> no you comment. Know. Yeah, that's all for part one. Join us in part two for some more of this. You can pretty much get away with doing anything within reason. Um, final show of the evening. Now, we've gone from the Lace Market Theatre, across the other side of town to the Playhouse with Rep. This one's been put together by Fifth Word, but... I didn't, like, from, for me, before I went in, I didn't really know anything about this. No. I looked at the poster, it said wreck, and there was a guy with some bags. I kind of, my intuition said, oh, it's gonna be one of those, like, things where, like, family's falling apart. I'm imagining he's got parents who he doesn't like. Much more explicit, the kind of wreck, yeah, than that. Yep. You had, literally, a train wreck. It, it's very explicitly a terrorist explosion, and everything goes haywire, and it's a one-man show. Yep. Quite ambitious, wouldn't you say? <laughs> it was it was so good. Like you, I had no idea because I, when I got there, I was like, "Do you have the program?" And you're like, "Yeah." And I was like, "It doesn't say anything about the show on here." I was like, <laughs> "It says who's in it," and I have no idea what the story is. So it was. I was watching it, and, mm. and I was there, like, "Okay, this is this is getting interesting." It's going is, into like, detail. Before we go into the detail of like what happened, like he, I must say, like it, it took me a while. He's he's kind of got an. He, he, he took, he, the guy's from Nottingham, not mm. not originally, but the accent. And it was just there, oh, like, kind of flipping between, I don't know whether he's got it or not, but... Nottingham is a hard accent. Mm. Like, I was thinking all the way through it, he's a bit too northern. Mm. But it, I, I didn't let it distract from his performance because it was absolutely incredible. The Nottingham accent is really hard to do. Well, what I realised is that as he was ex describing his life on his little train journey, I was e completely eating out of his, the palm of his hand. Yeah. He, like, completely got me. Yep. And then that happened. I, uh, I, well, I actually jumped. Yeah, honestly, because <laughs> we were jumped. watching it and then it just oh, happened. And I was just like, oh, it's, oh, it's that kind of wreck. <laughs> oh, it's always oh, happening. Oh, yeah. Again, we, we had the, the fun of Hannah and Hannah, but we're going back to the sort of like really hard time right now. Yeah. It was, a, and, and again, for a one man show, it was dark for that bit. It was very, very dark. Tell me, like, Looking back on it, how do you think it went as like a one-man show doing this massive disaster? I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I was going to say, it seemed to win you over. And they, absolutely incredible. The, the guy that did it, it's his first professional acting job as well. He's, really? Yeah, I, I did a little bit of swatting up on it. Uh, <laughs> She's good. She's good. Yeah. You can go back. Um, yeah, he's, he's fresh out of drama school. It was his first professional job. And... It was just, it was amazing. Like, like you say, he had me from the moment he got there. Like, mm. he was, he, he just came on and he stood there, didn't he? Yeah, there was no, like, lights went down. He just kind of came he out and was there. like, huh. and I was like, like I'm here. Okay. <laughs> and it was, it was so, so good. Like, he, the, the turmoil that he went through mm. in that show and just the range of emotions that he had to play was ridiculous all, and all on his own. Yeah. Uh, now, 
I had a problem with this. It, the, it peaks in the middle. Mm. So, and, and this is it. I don't want to take anything away from it because it was as good as you're making it out to be, but it kind of started off and built up to this big, massive thing. And it was really sh like shocking at some times and engaging and it just completely had you. It then went into the process of after there being this terrorist attack on a train, there's an Asian guy on this train and people start asking questions. And it gets wrapped up into this process of the police grilling him and him being broken down. Yeah. And I don't know whether to say this. So, it, yeah, basically, they, they break him down more and more and more. And by the end of it, he's kind of just a shell, a, a wreck, if you will. <laughs> don't laugh. That was quite a poignant play. Well done. Thanks. Anyway, anyway, yeah, but at the end, though, it kind of p patters out where this big, intense moment turns into kind of the character kind of disappearing and being replaced by this, this sort of husk of a person. Mm. And it felt like the ending wasn't as powerful as that one moment in the middle. Did you, did you, do you feel like that? Or I, do you think it carried it a bit more? I think, I, think, I think the way it ended was meant to kind of leave you wandering like with that, with a sense without there's no closure really mm. and i think that's how you were meant to feel because at the end of it i turned around and i won't give it away but i asked you like do you think you did do you did you feel like you didn't have the answer i did i didn't know i really hoped he didn't do it but you never know you just never know it's one of those things where it, it was left very much like open <gasps> i hope he didn't do it because mm. i love him i know again so charming great fantastic yeah he looked so happy at the end, didn't he? Yes, he when did. When he was bowing, Aww. I was like, oh, well, well done. Um, I, I imagine you would as well. It was a one-man yeah. show. He was knackered. Absolutely relief. <laughs> Just relief. It's like, oh, my oh. Lord. Oh, thank you. Over. Stop cheering. I want to go. I need yeah. water. The only thing out of that show that I thought detracted from it was the voiceovers. Oh, yeah, they were dreadful. They weren't, they weren't so, amazing. So there's, with it being a one-man show, there are certain bits where there's dialogue with other people and they played it over the top which was really awkward because there's one bit where the police show up mm. and he nicks a, a megaphone off the police officer and shouts at him. And there's a voice that plays over the top Sir, of it. Sir, what that's, are you doing? No, it sounded a Sir. bit like some like a Bobby from like a 1960s comedy going, oh, give me that back here. <laughs> it was a bit like, oh, okay. I think they ran out of budget there. Yeah, they were the it, only bits that yeah. I thought detracted from it a little bit. It, the th thing is though, at the end there was a bit where they used it to show this breaking down process. And that was really good, yeah, but the, the interrogation. Was, but the bit where he was talking to people and they were grilling him and it was actually supposed to be someone else mm. did sound like they got someone in the broom cupboard and like kind of tried to... It sounded like they literally went, read this. Yeah, which, which is such a shame because he was, he did a good performance Incredible. and then that happened and you're like, <laughs> I'm sorry, no, I'm serious. It's like, yeah, it, did it was, it was. There. And with this much more, if you did this much closer to a Nottingham accent, it would have been perfect. Yeah, it was just a bit northern. Mm. It's just a bit too northern. Well, this is it. There's a kind of... Uh, I, don't, I don't blame him because our accent's weird. It but is. I never thought I had an accent. No. I didn't think that I had a Nottingham accent. And then I said that to someone and they laughed at me. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I'm always like, I don't have an accent. I'm yeah. very neutral. And they're like... I thought this was the Queen's. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, d I knew I didn't speak like the Queen, if I'm Yeah, well, as I said before, I am an idiot. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, looking ahead, both of them have got a kind of launching their own separate thing. So the Lace Market, obviously, their season's kicking off at the minute. And actually, in the auditorium we're sitting in, they're ready for the net. Well, they're not necessarily ready. Um, set up for the History Boys, which is going to be their next show, which I'm looking forward to. I want to go see that. Yeah, it's going to be very good. And also, that's their season kicking off. Also, the Playhouse has got their Playground Festival, which I mentioned earlier, which is going to be loads of Knox-based talent, sort of, all put together in one very focused week or so. Is there anything you're looking forward to seeing? Well... In fact, no, I know what you're looking forward to seeing. More vlogs about Panto. Because you're doing your postcards from Panto on YouTube, aren't you? Yeah, but I'm not going to be seeing them. I'm going to be creating them. You're going to be seeing them. I shouldn't. Uh, um... I, feel, I feel like I've insulted you by not saying that that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Sorry, I won't hold it against you. Um, but no, yeah, I, I have a vlog. Look, look on YouTube yeah. for it. Tell us, what are you going to be in? Um, I'm going to be in the People's Theatre Company's annual panto. This year they are doing Jack and the Beanstalk. I'm Simon, simple Simon, um, which is Jack's brother. Um, oh, okay. So I'm like the character that 
does all of the audience participate participation stuff. So every time I come on stage, I have to say, hello, our audience or whatever, and they have to say it back. Um, so it's really good fun. It's the funny part, which I'm quite excited to do because I don't, I don't actually think I'm funny, but I must have done something right <laughs> in the audience in the audition because I managed to get the part, which is really exciting. But it's um, it's written by Amanda Hall. She writes them every year, has done for quite a long time now, and it's a brand new version of Jack and the Beanstalk. So it's got a slight twist at the end, um, which everyone likes. <laughs> Um, well, we've had some very dark plays, but yeah, if, you, exactly. if, you end, if you end Jack and the Beanstalk on a dark note where it's like, and then the giants the old... came, winter is coming. <laughs> yeah. Everyone died. Every yeah. Everybody died. So, Amanda, I hear you've been reading a lot of Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> As an actor, you either love it or you hate it. Like, I've heard actors talking about, like, it's the bane of my life. If I ever have to do panto, well, oh, I don't know what I'd do with myself. But it's really fun. Oh, it's, it's great. It's ridiculous. It's, honestly, it's fantastic. You can pretty much get away with doing anything within reason <laughs> on, okay. in okay. a panto. <laughs> um, the director is sat in the pit watching you. So if you do something a bit too close to the bone, you'll just be like, oh, I'm in trouble now. But it's, it's one of those things where the audience, you could be in the middle of a scene and someone in the audience will just say something hilarious and you just be like, you. Yeah, and every night will be different because some nights it will be harder work because sometimes if you've got an audience full of like adults, they're not as game as children can be. But sometimes, like one show, we've got 250 children. I was going to say the density of children happens as well. 250 children. I don't quite know how I'm going to cope with that because they just, they'll just shout at me and I'll be like, please stop. Please stop shouting! I'm trying to do a show! You'll have to have like panto themed children bouncers. To yeah. Drag children away and like in, in, a, in a child friendly way bounce them out the middle. I know, it's gonna be it's gonna be carnage, but and Teachers, that's what they're called. Teachers. Yeah. Child friendly <laughs> bouncers are called teachers. Teachers, mm. yeah. But it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing. I'm really excited because it's the first time I've done this kind of role. I've done I've done evil before, I've done comic I have done comic before, but it was comic evil. Um, and in, I've, what in? Um, Robin Hood, I was one of the sheriff's henchmen, Ooh. muck and rake. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was the last one I did with them, so it's going to be nice to be the good guy for once. Because like, as well, after Panto, we get to go out and, and meet the kids. Like We go out in costume oh, really? and they can meet us. And obviously when I was playing an evil henchman, all the kids were like, I hate you. And I was like... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not really evil. Did you get like nasty kids? Yeah. Like, oh, get lost, I don't like you. Yeah, honestly, they were horrible to me. <laughs> and, and so this time I'm going to be a character that hopefully they'll like. So I'll go out and they'll be like, Simon! And I'll be like, oh, I'm home. <laughs> 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 they love me, hopefully, hopefully. The thing is, if you get a load of kids coming up to you saying, I want to be silly when I grow up, you'll have done a good job. I know, exactly. Yeah, I was like, great. no, it's simple. I'm simple, Simon. Oh, I want to be simple when I grow up. <laughs> well, <laughs> Aim high, kids. Don't, don't try too hard and you'll make it. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for being on the show. You're it, welcome. It's been a pleasure, and I'm sure we'll have you on the show again. You better. I, I don't like the threat. <laughs> it's very intimidating. I don't like it. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the first episode of Curtain Call. Thank you so much for watching. You can find all our reviews on our YouTube channel, Curtain Call Not, and find exclusive content on patreon.com forward slash curtain call, where you can get in touch if you have a show coming up. Thank you to Danielle for, well, laughing at me for half an hour, the Lace Market for letting us crash their theatre, and a special thanks to our top tier Patreon supporters, who you can see on the screen now. Well, see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> they love me! Hopefully, hopefully. If you, on, you'll get that situation where, like, a little girl will see you and come and give you a hug and be like, I want to be like you when I'm older. What a man, because I'm playing a man. <laughs> 2017, okay. little girls can do whatever they, they want. They can do whatever they want. Are you assuming her gender?